In this topic, we are identifying the intermolecular forces between atoms, ions, and molecules. So if we look at this particular example, we have uh, a molecule of chloramine and we have a molecule of hydrogen peroxide. And they ask us, what are the intermolecular forces of, um, uh, that are between these two molecules? Okay, so if we're trying to determine which intermolecular forces are at play in this particular example, well, we have to first remember that between molecules or atoms, there's always going to be one type of intermolecular force at play. That is uh, dispersion forces, or you may also hear it called London dispersion forces. Dispersion forces um, are forces that are at play uh, in between all atoms, between all ions, and molecules. Okay, They will all exert the dispersion force on each other. So dispersion forces is going to be one part of our answer. Well, let's determine if there are any other intermolecular forces at play. Well, uh, in order to determine this, um, if, if there are dipole forces at play, well, we need to first need to know whether or not these molecules are polar or nonpolar. So I've already drawn these out, uh, and, and we see that hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, is a polar molecule. And we also see that chloramine is a polar molecule. It is not symmetrical. Um, electrons are not distributed evenly here. Now, I know hydrogen peroxide may look a little tricky, but if you actually look at its molecular geometry, you see that this hydrogen is bent out, bent out at a strange angle compared to the other hydrogen, so it is actually not symmetrical. And I tried to represent that here with the, with the uh, dashes here, okay? Chloramine is obviously not nonpolar, um, and it's because of this chlorine here in these two hydrogen atoms. So we have two polar molecules. So what type of, of attractive force is at play between two polar molecules besides dispersion forces? Well, dipole-dipole interactions. So we could just write dipole forces. And what that dipole force is, is again, when we look back here, we know that there's going to be uh, unequal distribution of electrons here in this molecule and even this molecule, which is going to create charged regions of this molecule, okay? Going to create charged regions. For example, let's look at a water molecule, the traditional water molecule. It has a tetrahedral electron domain geometry, but a bent molecular geometry. Because of its bent molecular geometry, this is actually a polar molecule. Now, because it is bent and therefore polar, it has charged regions. Here's the positively charged region of the water molecule, and this is the negatively charged region because this is where uh, electron density is centered and electrons are negatively charged. So we've got a negatively charged region of the water molecule, negative charge up here, and positively charged region of the water molecule here. So this is what we call a dipole, okay? It's a dipole. Well, one negatively charged region of one molecule a water molecule is attracted to positively charged regions of other polar molecules. That's what a dipole attractive force is, okay? And we also have one more other attractive force at play, and that is going to be hydrogen bonding. Now, how do I know that hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular force that acts between these two molecules? Well, Let's just look at the two molecules, okay? I, I could look at their, their actual drawn structures here, or I could just look at the molecular formulas here. And what is a hydrogen bond? Well, it's a special type of bond that forms when you have hydrogen bonded to either fluorine, hydrogen bonded to oxygen, or hydrogen bonded to a nitrogen atom. In these scenarios, if you have a hydrogen bonded to a fluorine atom, an oxygen atom, 
or a nitrogen atom, that hydrogen can form a special type of bond called a hydrogen bond with those same three atoms on another molecule. So this hydrogen can form a hydrogen bond with a fluorine atom or an oxygen atom or a nitrogen atom or vice versa. There are different combina combinations there. And the reason is because fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen are so much more electronegative than hydrogen, they pull the electrons, uh, making that hydrogen highly positive, which will allow it to form, uh, uh, to create a, an, a, an attraction. It's kind of like an electrostatic interaction or attraction to highly electronegative atoms in other molecules. So that's what you see here. So again, just to refresh, hydrogen bonds can form when you have a hydrogen atom bonded to either a fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen, or nitrogen atom. The fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen atoms pull on the electrons so greatly that these hydrogens bonded to them can hydrogen bond to one of these three atoms in another molecule when present. So here, I've got a hydrogen atom or well, two hydrogen atoms, right, bonded to a nitrogen, and I also have a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen here. So obviously, they meet the criteria to hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonding can occur uh, with these hydrogen atoms because they're bonded to that nitrogen, to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine on another molecule. And hydrogen bonding can occur with these hydrogen atoms bonded to those oxygens to either nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine on another molecule. So these are my answers. There would be no ion dipole forces simply because neither one of these are an ion. I cannot have an ion dipole force if I have no ion present. So dispersion forces are present all the time as an intermolecular force. Dipole forces are present when I have polar molecules. Hydrogen bonding is present in these situations where I have hydrogen atoms bonded to either fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen atoms. And ion dipole intermolecular forces are present when I have an ion and a polar molecule.